All right. So I was praying earlier today and, you know, last time we had eight weeks of classes and each time I just kind of seek God on uh, what I'm to talk about or what it, what's on his heart. Really. It's, it's just really Holy spirit led what we do here. I just kind of share his word and share what um, I believe he wants to release to all of you guys. And so as, as I was spending some time with him today and I was just talking, you know, Lord, what, what do you have me to do? What do you have me to release? And I felt like the Lord was really wanting me to talk about the importance of not only knowing him through his word, but experience, experiential knowledge of the Lord too. Not just that we are in a religious type of way seeking God, but that we actually can learn how to posture ourselves, how to posture yourself to receive from God, how to posture yourself to receive from the spirit, how to encounter Jesus, not just through his word, but through other ways, through dreams, through visions, through his spirit. And so I just kind of want to share about that tonight. And, you know, when I first encountered Jesus and, um, he first came to me and revealed himself to me. It was like no experience on earth I had ever had because it's, it's not an earthly thing. When you encounter Jesus Christ, it's, it's not a natural, it's not something your natural mind is expecting. And I love the Lord because a lot of times our first initial encounters with Jesus are the most memorable encounters we'll have is when he woos our hearts. When we first meet him, you know, when you first get born again, the Bible even says, you know, we come to him because God pulls on our hearts to know Christ. It's not like we in ourselves say, you know what? I think today I'm going to become a Christian. No, it's the Holy spirit who pulls on your heart to receive Jesus. So you know, if you can go back in your mind to remember when you said yes to the Lord and how he drew you to himself. And if you can remember the joy of salvation, the joy that you felt when you first encountered Jesus, when you first came to know him, when you first uh, opened his word and how excited you were about Christ and how you wanted to seek him, how you want to know him. He wants to restore that same feeling to you so that that doesn't leave you. The joy of your salvation is for every day. And it's not that he's left you. It's that we've left him because he's always there. And so when I first encountered Jesus, I'll never forget just the eyes of absolute love and acceptance and holiness and beauty. And it's like someone who knows everything about you, everything you've ever done, everything you've ever said. And even though you weren't necessarily living a pure and holy life, he looked at you as if you were the apple of his eye, as if no one has ever loved you as much as Jesus can love you. And even though I wasn't, I wasn't perfect, you know, Jesus acted like you are, even though I know people say, oh, well, he wants us to be transformed. Absolutely. But when you encounter Christ, his love is all consuming his, his being, his presence, um, fills you in a way that this natural earth can't fill you. I mean, I used to drink, I used to parties, go do tons of stuff. I've been on trips. I've been on private planes. I've shopped in expensive stores. I've been in expensive cars. I've done all of um, tons of things that people would say, oh, if I could do that, I'd be happy. And I, I'd feel, you know, joy. And the truth is nothing compares to seeing Christ. Absolutely nothing, uh, nothing I've ever encountered. Even since then, I've had angelic visitation. I've had different things and, and happened to me during life, but nothing is like seeing the eyes of Jesus. I mean, if you, if you could just close your eyes and just imagine for a minute, him looking at you and through you and loving you completely and fully just how you are, that he himself created you. He breathed you into your mother's womb. He wrote a book about you before you were born. He knew you from the foundation of the earth and he will forever 
know you forever and ever. He knows you. He knows the most intimate parts of you, every single thing that's ever happened to you, every part of your heart, everything you hold back, your personality, the things you like, the things you don't like. Jesus knows all of that stuff. He's so intimately aware of you. And so he wants us to be intimately aware of him in the same ways as he is for us. And so, you know, when we come to know Christ, we come to know him through his spirit, through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals Christ. The Holy Spirit comes in the, the Bible says, Jesus says, I will send you the spirit of truth and he will bring back to your remembrance everything that I've spoken. And so we really come to know him through his spirit. And if you are not yet baptized fully in the Holy Spirit, I'm assuming that every person on here, I, th I think this is a fair assumption that you all are born again, that you all have already accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm just assuming that during these eight weeks that you all, you are all born again. Now, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. So he is with you. When you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and is with you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will be with you and will be in you. So those are two separate things. So he comes and he will be with you. And so when the Holy Spirit starts to walk with you, he starts to guide you and lead you into little things. And, you know, once you get born again, you can't really do the things most of the time that you used to do because the Holy Spirit's right there going, hey, you know, don't do that. He's kind of, you know, people say he's your conscience, which technically he is, you know, he's telling you don't do this, do this. And so when we come to know Christ, we come to know him uh, through the Holy spirit. That's why Jesus said, it's better that I go and I leave the Holy spirit with you because the Holy spirit searches the deep things of God. The Holy spirit reveals God to us and Jesus to us. The Holy spirit knows our destiny. And he's going to help you get there. And um, so who can receive the Holy Spirit? You know, who, who can receive him? Well, we know that in the Bible that they all gathered together in one place, one accord. They all believed in Christ. They all received the Holy Ghost. So really, it's about believing in who Jesus is. It's, it's coming to God in faith believing that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, you know, in, um, let's see, let me find my one of these here. In Isaiah 57, 15, um, I'm reading out of the passion translation tonight, just so you guys know, most verses I'm going to be sharing are out of that Bible. The Holy spirit will strengthen you as you grow to know Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I wrote. Okay, hold on, Isaiah. 50, here we go. Isaiah 57, 15. For this is what the high and majestic one says. The one who fills the eternal realm with glory, whose name is holy. I dwell in high and holy places, but also with the bruised and lowly in spirit. Those who are humble and quick to repent. I dwell with them to revive the spirit of the humble to revive the heart of those who are broken over their sin. You know, so there we're learning the Lord saying, I dwell in high and holy places, but also with the bruised and lowly in spirit, those who are humble and quick to repent. Then in Acts 2.38, when after Peter got filled with the Holy Spirit, the first thing he says is repent and return to God. Each one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus to have your sins removed. Then you may take hold of the gift of the Holy Spirit. But we know that's not the only way because then we learn later that Peter goes to Cornelius's house. And as he's speaking, the Holy Spirit falls on him and his household and he wasn't yet baptized. So it doesn't always have to be after baptism. We see that in the story of Cornelius. But the two things there I thought that had in common was repentance and seeking Christ is it's key. It's key. If, if we're not re living a lifestyle of repentance, if we're not coming to Jesus, if we're not believing that he is, if we're not humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God, the Holy spirit's not 
going to have the freedom to flow through us. So if you haven't repented lately, if you haven't been to the altar lately, which you can do in your own home, right? Right. When we get off, you can get on your knees and talk to God yourself. You don't, you know, there's one mediator between us and God and that's Christ Jesus. And so you can just humble yourself and say, you know what, Lord, forgive me for this, this, and this. If you're not yet filled with the Holy Spirit, if you, if you don't yet have your prayer language, if you've been asking God for that, try turning your heart to the Lord and saying, Lord, I humble myself and I repent and let the Holy Spirit bring up those things within you and ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2.39, the Bible says, God's promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and your families, for those yet born and for everyone whom the Lord, our God calls to himself. So it's for everyone. You know, the Bible says in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Your, the women will prophesy. My maid servants, men servants will prophesy. So the Lord's pouring out his spirit since acts. He hasn't stopped. The Holy spirit's on the earth. He's on the earth. So it's just as simple as repenting, turning to God, being filled with the Holy spirit, but we need the Holy spirit to help us understand who Jesus is, to help us come to know Jesus through intimacy. You know, a lot of times becoming intimate with Christ is a big time posture of your heart. So our heart, the Lord looks at the heart. So those who maybe have a harder heart or you've hardened your heart towards the things of God, or you've hardened your heart towards loving him, loving others, putting the father first, that's going to be hard for you to come to know Christ in an intimate way, because if there's a hardness on your heart, it, it's blocking Jesus, letting Jesus fully in. We have to surrender every place within us to him. We have to let him be Lord over every place in our hearts every day, not just once. And then I get, I'm getting filled with the, with the Holy spirit. And that's it for me. I've reached the pinnacle. No, that's just the beginning. And it's an everyday walk. You know, when I came to know Christ and I remember, you know, seeing him, of course, there's, there's been, there's nothing like it. And, and he's just absolutely amazing. But what happened is seeing him sparked something in me a love in me, a desire in me to know him. And it was a desire to know him. And I didn't really know how to seek God. No one had taught me. I was raised Presbyterian. So no, I definitely wasn't happening in my church. They weren't teaching anything like that. So for me, it was just, I was marked by Jesus and my spirit man knew what to do. So just like the Bible says, you know, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. That's exactly what he did for me. He led me into what to do. And I want to tell you, it's way easier than a five-step formula. It's a one-step formula. It's your heart towards Jesus. It is literally that simple. It is not hard. You don't have to fast for, you know, 40 days, no bread, got to beat myself. Just it's turning your heart and your affection towards Jesus Christ. It's posturing your heart to receive from him. And so we're just going to take a minute even right now. And we're just going to all, if you want to close your eyes, you don't have to, but I just want to activate and do it right now. So you understand what I'm talking about. And so I like to close my eyes and I like to just close my eyes. And I like to tell Jesus how much I love him. I like to say, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. You're so precious to me. You're so precious, Lord. I love you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. I bow at your feet, Jesus. I worship you. I glorify you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for all you're doing, for who you are. I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you that you're with me. You're around me, Lord. You're in me, Jesus. 
I love you, Jesus. Thank you for all you did for me, Lord. You're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. I love you, Lord. You're beautiful, Jesus. You're so beautiful, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're beautiful. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you're with us, Lord. Thank you that you're for us, Lord. Thank you for your love. Your never-ending love towards us, Jesus. Your mercy is new every single day for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I yield to you, Lord. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I usually will pray like that and turn my the posture of my heart towards Christ. And then I also, I pray in tongues as well. So if that is a gift you have, I would recommend you also start to pray in tongues. When I first met the Lord, I didn't have that. And I would just say over and over how much I loved him, how beautiful he was to me. And I would just say it over and over until I felt his presence, until I, I was connected with him, if that makes sense. There's a place you can get to where you can connect with the Lord. It is spirit to spirit. It is one-on-one. -on -one. It is I'm living moving and having my being in him there is a place you can get to where that is real in your life and it can be every day and i would recommend that you take time each day to seek him until you get to that place of i'm having my being i'm moving in him i'm hearing him i'm feeling him i'm sensing him you can do this through the word too you can read the word and study the word meditate on its truths, read the same thing over and over again. If it's leading you into knowing Christ more, you know, read Psalms 139 over and over again about the truth of how God loves you, the truth of how God sees you. You know, the Holy Spirit's job is to reveal Christ, is to make him known. He's an experiential God. The reason Jesus died was to buy fellowship back with the father to us. So if we're not doing that, that's the thing that he died for fellowship. I pray Lord, that they are one with us just as we are one. That's what Jesus prayed in John 17, that we would be one with him and with the father. The Bible even says that Jesus and the father will come and make their home in you. Not only the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, Jesus is dwelling in you. The Father is dwelling in you. The Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God, just like the Father is God. They are all God. A piece of himself is deposited in you. And so if you ever want to grow closer with Jesus, the first step is stop what your natural mind is doing. Get away from the natural things that you're doing because you cannot multitask and seek God with your whole heart. We're not made that way. We're made to stop and rest in his presence, to rest and seek God, to rest and wait on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will help you do this. He will teach you day by day how to do this and how to seek uh, Jesus Christ more and more and more. You know, the Bible says the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. And what happens is when you start to 
reposture your heart each day and just close your eyes and just talk to the Lord, pray in tongues, talk to God, pray in English. Don't pray your prayer list. This is not a time of that type of prayer where I'm bringing in a list and that's fine. That's wonderful. But this is more of a heart to heart communion with Christ. If you want to know Jesus in an intimate way, it's going to take an intimate heart. Just like you fall in love with any man. When you fall in love with a man, if you're distracted over here and you're doing, you can't because you haven't fully given yourself to him. You, that's the same with Jesus. He desires for your attention and it's a, it's a daily thing. It's not just on Sunday at church. Every single day, we all can do this. We all can seek the Lord. If you do it with music, I played some soaking music before we got on today. If that helps you, wonderful. I say engage as many senses as you can. So if you want to hear heavenly uh, music, if you want to even light maybe a candle, the frankincense and myrrh, something that just to engage your uh, senses in seeking God, that, that does help me. I like to sit in quiet a lot just because um, I like to hear the voice of God. So I will sit in quiet for a while. And I also want to tell you, I don't want to be un, unrealistic about things, at least with my walk. I'm here to practically tell you how to seek the Lord and practically help you, not with a lot of steps and prophetic jargon and this and that. I, I want to tell you what I did and what has worked for me and what I know will work for you. And it's just, it's a simple relationship where you're loving him and he's loving you. And so, um, you know, at the beginning, when you're doing this and you're starting to seek the Lord, I'm going to tell you that it's, it, it might be really easy corporately. Like when we just closed our eyes, how many of you felt connected to the Lord? Yeah. Almost every hand is raised because you all, and look, we, that wasn't even two minutes of just, it was that quick of just posturing your heart. It was that, that quick. And so that corporately, it's a little easier just because we're all together. But when you're, when you're doing it on your own and you're starting to seek Jesus and in intimacy, you might get very distracted. <laughs> Let's just say that distractions will come at you left and right. Your phone will ring. Literally. I'm not kidding. Watch your phone will ring. You'll get a text message. Your kids will knock on the door. You'll, your mind will say, Oh, you forgot to do this. You forgot to do that, but turn all that off or write it down. If that helps you and, and just say, no, this is what I do. I say, no, I'm seeking God right now. And I won't bring my phone. If, if I'm coming in to be with the Lord, I definitely don't bring my phone. That's, I, I don't want that distraction, but it's just that simple of five minutes. Some of you moms with young kids, it could be in the car. This is what I've done before where I've been alone in the car and I knew that was my alone time for the day. And so I don't play any music in the car. It's just quiet and I'm driving, but I'm communing with God in my drive because that's my time with the Lord. So I encourage you anytime you get where it's you and alone, even if it's in the bathroom or whatever, just you alone, reposture and refocus your heart towards the Lord. And you will see that your acceleration of your relationship with Jesus will grow and grow and grow. And it's simple. It's, it's just because you returned your focus to him. It is that simple. We all just did it together. Most of you raised your hands and felt connected to the Lord, felt the presence of God each and every day, encourage you to do that. And that's what these next eight weeks are going to be about. I'm just going to be sharing about, well, whatever the Lord wants to share, but Hearing his voice is absolutely vital for each one of you. I'm definitely going to be sharing about hearing the voice of God. Every one of you can hear the voice of God. And by the end of the eight weeks, I believe you will hear the voice of God. You already hear the voice of God. You're just not aware of it. Your perception hasn't opened to it yet. Every, each and every one of you, God is speaking to you. He doesn't only speak in an audible voice. 
He speaks through events in your life. He speaks through other people in your life. He speaks directly to you. He speaks in dreams. He speaks in visions. He can speak through movies. He can speak through songs. He can speak through animals. He can speak through creation. He can speak through numbers. He can speak through Facebook. He can speak through anything. He can speak through you're cleaning your house and light comes in and shines on the floor and you see all this dirt and he God speaking to you. Hey, when my light comes and illuminates, he he's trust me, he's speaking to you. You're just maybe not perceptive of it yet, but we're going to we're going to deal with topics like that. I'm going to teach you guys how I receive revelation from God, my personal prophetic flow with the Lord, how I personally receive word of knowledge, how I, uh, start out and flow in the prophetic giftings. We're going to talk about all of that in, in these next eight weeks, but really today, I just want to focus on all of us posturing our hearts, teaching you how to seek Jesus, because that's why all of you are on here is to know him more, to have an experiential relationship with Christ, to grow in his word, to know the Holy spirit, to know the father I know that's why you're on here. You're hungering and thirsting for something deeper. You know, there's more, there is more. The Bible says God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And we are diligently coming on here to seek the face of God, to seek the Holy spirit. So when the Holy spirit starts leading you, just like, um, you know, he led Jesus into the wilderness and when we learn about John the Baptist, you know, he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. If you guys remember when, when uh, Mary came up and Elizabeth, the, the babies jumped in their womb and John was, was filled with the Holy Spirit from being in the womb. And it's interesting because when we, we learn about John's life, you know, his dad was Zachariah. He was the priest in the temple. Remember, Gabriel appeared to him and then he said, well, show me a sign. And the angel said, well, you'll be mute and you won't be able to speak until your son is born. And so he was uh, a priest. He, he was, they cast lots. He went into the holy place. He had a visitation. So normally John would also follow in his father's footsteps. He would be a priest in the temple, but John didn't do that because John had a prophetic call on his life. John's parents, of course, told him, you know, your birth was through angelic visitation. Your mother couldn't conceive. She conceived because Christ chose you. I'm sure they told him his dad. What parents would not tell their child? If, if an angel came and visited me while I was pregnant, you, you do not keep that from your children. You obviously let them know they have a destiny and a calling over their life. So I love that the Holy Spirit being in John, the Bible says that John grew in his love for God. And he grew in his love for God because the Holy Spirit within him was helping him grow in his love for God. So as he yielded to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's prompting in his life, he grew in his love for God. It's the same for us. We should always be growing and maturing in our love for God. If we're not growing, Smith Wigglesworth says it this way. If you're not growing and maturing every day, you're a backslider. And that is absolute hard truth but it is the truth. If you're not yielding to God and growing in love for the father, you're missing that connection. It's maybe because you're just religious and you don't have that connection. You're missing that because with, with Christ and with the Lord, each and every day we grow in him each and every day. He'll give you a rhema word. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said, come to me every day and I will give you living bread. Come to me every day. His bread is his word. Come to him every day. He'll give you living words straight out of the Bible. You don't necessarily need a prophetic word. You need to open the Bible. Let a rhema word speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit quicken a scripture and read it over and over. Every day you can have fresh bread from heaven. Every day you can receive revelation from the word of God each and every day. So I want to put the importance on the word of God too. I'm not just an experience. If, if any of you know me, I am not just, I don't just run after experiences. I run after Jesus Christ. I run after his heart, his will, his way. I read the Bible each and every day. I study the word of God. Lord's given me grace to do that. I, I love the word of God. It is so important for you to know him. 
because when the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks the word of God. So if you don't know it, if you haven't studied it and read it, you're going to be limited a lot of times on what you hear from the Holy Spirit, because any of you who hear God's voice, you know, a lot of times he's speaking scripture to you. You might wake up singing scripture, wake up thinking about a scripture. It's that's the Holy Spirit will quicken it to you. And so John was led by the spirit in his life to be in the lonely wilderness. He chose to do that instead of taking the honor of what was well-respected in that day of being born in a Levitical priesthood family. He decided to know because of the Holy Spirit's prompting and because of my uniqueness, which you all are extremely unique to God. Each and every one of you is unique to God. If your parents were in ministry, pastors, or your family, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the same thing God has for you. He could have a totally unique and special ministry for you. You don't always have to follow like, like John did. You know, he, he fell, followed the Holy Spirit's promptings. And I love that the Holy Spirit brought him into the wilderness because he separated him from the religious spirit. Boop, separate. And I love that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. You know, so the Holy Spirit's going to lead us and guide us to be separate, to come out from the world. And the more you allow the Holy Spirit to take you away from the carnal, the natural, the world systems, the things that, you know, the world now is, um, you know, deep darkness covers the earth deeper darkness covers the people, a deep darkness covers the earth, deep darkness covers the people. And so that's what we're living in. We're living in where deep darkness, a veil is over their eyes where they cannot see. They do not know the truth. They can't discern without having the spirit of truth in you. You can't discern truth from a lie. If you don't know the word of God, how can you discern? And the times we live in now, whether or not we like to admit it, if you don't know the truth, you're going to be deceived. You are going to be deceived and the world will cheer you on in that deception. They will say, yes, yes, run into sin, run into what's wicked. They're cheering you on for that. But we can't be like the world. And so the Holy Spirit, when he, when he starts his work in us, one of the ways you'll know you'll, you're yielding is you'll find that you become more and more and more separate from the world. More, and, and some friendships might have to fall. And some family members might fall for a season. God's a God of restoration. But when you first, when the Holy Spirit starts to woo you, you'll notice that, wow, man, I, I can't be, I can't listen to that anymore. I can't hang out with that person anymore. I can't do that anymore. That's him bringing you into the wilderness season. And then the enemy comes along with that as well. And he's going to push back against what, against what the Holy Spirit's doing in your life. Whenever you come and seek the God, God more intimately, when you get on stuff like this, where we're going after the Holy Spirit, we want him to touch us. We want to be filled. We want to know the truth. We want to speak in tongues. We want to pray for others. We want to prophesy. We want to heal the sick, cast out demons. The devil's not going to like that. So he's going to come and try to steal that seed and, and come and try to steal everything um, that's happening tonight for, from you. But that's not going to happen because the Holy Spirit already has his grip on you. That's why you're here. He's led you here. Just like he led uh, Jesus into the wilderness. He led John to be separate from the religious system. He led you here tonight. Nothing you do is a mistake. Nothing you do for God is a mistake. God, God has a purpose and a plan for all of this um, for you guys to all be here. So um, I just, I just wanted to release a little bit um, of that tonight, just a little bit on you know, posturing our hearts. It's the main takeaway. If, if you don't take away anything else from tonight, until we meet back in eight weeks, I want you to practice every day as the Holy Spirit leads, of course, to posture your heart towards Christ, to fix your heart towards him each day this week, even if that's five minutes, just get a chance to close your eyes and just commune with him 
just just talk to him. You know, you've been bought uh, by a high price. It's a high price was paid for you, for for you, for the veil to be torn, for you to commune with God. You're seated with him in heavenly places. You know, all of this is a reality, but you have to believe it. You have to believe it. You know, uh, Jesus said to Thomas, he said, more blessed are those who haven't seen and still believe. And so maybe we haven't been caught up into the heavenly realms and we haven't seen heaven where we're seated with Christ, but more blessed are you because you haven't seen, but you believe that truth because it's written in the word of God. You're more blessed, Jesus says, and it just takes believing. It just takes turning towards him, saying yes and trusting in him. And so I want to pray over some of you guys as the Holy Spirit leads. Um, and then I'm just going to release a blessing first. I'm going to just prophesy a little bit as the Holy Spirit leads. Earlier today, when I was um, sitting in my office, I was typing out some um, Bible verses and I felt oil dumping on my head and it running down my face. I know some of you have felt that before. And it's a very unique sensation. It is like someone has opened oil and um, dumped it and you can, but it, you can't wipe it with your natural hand, but you feel it running down your face. And then the cool thing was I smelt it. I smelt and it smelled like frankincense and myrrh. If you've ever smelled frankincense and myrrh anointing oil, that's exactly what it smelled like. And it was like, oh, this smells. So I knew that that was something I wanted to release on all of you was the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you guys to be commissioned to do what God's called you to do, you know, for the Lord to anoint you fresh for the Holy Spirit presence to anoint you fresh. We can be filled all the time. We don't just have to be filled once. Jesus said, keep coming to me, be filled, be filled. Jesus blew on the Holy Spirit, blew on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit as he blew on his disciples. And then we see them all meeting together and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. You know, there's, we can be refreshed. Then they met again in Acts after they were being persecuted. And the Bible says the building they were in shook and they all got filled again with the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-time thing. Jesus has filled them over and over his disciples over and over. He fills them. He continues to fill us. He continues to anoint us. It's a new year. There's new assignments for you this year. There's new things for each and every one of you. You are anointed of God. You each have a unique ministry unto the Lord. Your first ministry is unto Jesus, ministering unto Jesus. That is your first ministry and always put that first. Always put first you ministering to him, you loving him, pouring your oil, pouring your love out on him. That's everyone's ministry. Um, always make sure you're doing that. And then the Lord will lead you and guide you into what, what you're each called to do. So I just want to release that upon you. Um, and then if you have, if anyone has to go, feel free to go. Uh, you guys are free here to, to leave whenever you need to. You're perfectly fine. So father, I just thank you right now for the fresh anointing that, that you poured upon me, um, this afternoon, Lord, I thank you for fresh oil from heaven. And Lord, I'm asking right now in Jesus' name that you would begin to anoint these women. Lord, that you would begin to awaken in their hearts, in their minds, and in their spirits, their God-given destiny, their purpose, Lord. Jesus, I ask that when they meet with you, you begin to reveal to them who they are in you and who you are in them. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for fresh anointing pouring out upon these women, whether they feel it or not. Not everyone is a feeler, but Lord, whether they feel it or not, that they receive it by faith, Lord, that there is fresh anointing coming upon them tonight, Lord. That their walk with God is changing. It's shifting 
from tonight forward to a personal, deeper place, spirit to spirit. That Lord, your heart is deeply calling out to their heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a pulling from the Lord. There's a, there's a wooing from the Lord over you tonight. He is jealous over you. He is jealous over your time. He is jealous over your heart. He is jealous over your thoughts. He desires to be in first place in your life. He desires for spirit to spirit, oneness, communion, heart communion. The Lord is drawing hearts back to him tonight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's washing over. I see washing over of hearts. Yes, Lord. There's debris in the water and the Lord's just washing it clean. And it's, it's like he talks about the foxes in the vineyards when you have to catch those troubling foxes. There's debris in the water and I, of your heart. And I see the Lord just coming and washing it clean. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for intimacy, that you're drawing every one of these women, that you become so real to them, Lord, that you restore the joy of their salvation, that you unstop their ears to hear you, that you soften their heart tonight where it's gotten hard in places, Lord, it's gotten hard They've been complacent, Lord, in their walk with you. The bare minimum was enough, but the Lord says no. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, it's, he's reminding me this. It's your spirit that is going to lead you to Jesus. If you would yield in your spirit, all that means is give the Holy Spirit permission to lead you and guide you. He will guide you back to the heart of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for touching us tonight. Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is here, is in them. Jesus, I thank you that you are within us. Father, you are within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, touch us so we're not the same. Convict us, Lord, in places that we've let go, or we've not cared. Lord, touch those places in us tonight. Draw us back. Give us a fresh hunger for your presence, Lord. Give us a fresh hunger and thirst, Jesus, that before we fall asleep, we would think about you. The first thing when we wake up in the morning, Lord, we would think about you. Jesus, come into our lives. Be real to us. We invite you. We say, yes, Lord, have your way in us. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus.